Ladies and gentlemen, this is Amateur Repair Time, back with another cool repair video for you this evening. Now, usually we put these videos on our Joe's Video Games channel, um, but I think we're going to start moving them over to our new channel, Amateur Repair Time. So you're probably watching over here. So, welcome to our new channel, if you're uh, just joining us. I am an amateur repair person. That's, that's why we call it amateur repair time. I put the time in there because I wanted to make sure that we didn't neglect the clocks. <laughs> um, so today's video is going to be on this cool Sylvania radio. These are some of my favorites. This type, not, not the Sylvania type, but just the, the less expensive type, right? It's kind of plain, but it still has a nice style to it, right? We did a video not too long ago on this Westinghouse. I believe it was that Westinghouse. I think so. <laughs> on that Westinghouse. It was a little while back, uh, which is another kind of plain one. And this one is a, is a very simple, plain one. There's hardly anything extra to it. The, the knob here, oh, that's kind of interesting. As I turn this, this moves at a different speed. So I'm turning this farther than this is turning. So it's geared somehow. Huh. Maybe it's not as it seems, or maybe it's just slipping. Is it just slipping? No, it seems geared. That's interesting. Huh. How did they accomplish that? We'll have to look into that. Um, so it's just a very simple radio. It doesn't even have anything on it other than the, uh, stations. There's nothing on this volume knob, or I, I suppose this is the on-off volume knob. And then it says Sylvania on the top, and it's not even inked or anything. It's the same color as the, the case. So, pretty cool. Very simple, but it's beautiful. It's really well designed, you know? It's not cheap looking, even though it's obviously it wasn't very expensive. It's kind of a, you know, perfect little minimalist design. I like it. So it is a Sylvania model number 1-251. Now, I believe I bought this on uh, Facebook. My brother went and picked it up for me. My brother, Donnie is one of my cohorts. Donnie and Joey, my two brothers, uh, we we uh, do all kinds of things together. I think this was one of four radios that I picked up. A guy put up four radios for sale on uh, Facebook, and I think he wanted... It was something like $60 for all four of them, and this is like the, the cheapest one of the four. 117 volts, 25 to 60 cycles. That's interesting. Hmm. Why would there be different cycles? I don't get that yet. Like I said, folks, I'm an amateur. This apparatus uses inventions of the United States pat patents owned by Sylvania Electric Products, Inc., and United States patents licensed by Radio Corporation of America, patent numbers supplied on request. Look how they broke the words like that so that they could have this black box here. <laughs> or was the... There must have been something under there like this maybe. And someone has marked it out. I mean, is that graffiti from someone or is that the company did that because whatever this represented was no longer in effect? You see what I'm saying? So over here, it says Radio Manufacturers Association, RMA, and there's a little stamp. And they have made a spot for it when they printed it. There was something here, too. You can see the edge of it. And the the words wrap around it. See, it says corporation, right? So there's something 
here originally and somebody has marked over it. I wonder if that's just somebody messing around like a kid or something. Or did, <laughs> did Sylvania mark out whatever was there uh, because they no longer had a, a an association with them or something. You know what I mean? It kind of looks like, almost like it was done purposefully. Okay, no big deal. So it says, high ratio tuning control. So that must be the gearing that we noticed. Off on volume control. Antenna, the built-in antenna eliminates the need for aerial or ground wires. If certain stations are weak or noisy, reception can often be improved by turning the cabinet so it faces a different direction. Caution, disconnect power cord before removing back cover. To change tubes, take off back cover by removing this screw, and then they point to it. <laughs> I love it. Wow, so cool. Stuff was made cool back then, in my opinion. That's what I think. So look at this. There is a screw there that you can get to. And there is a screw there that you can get to. And I guess if you did that, you could probably slide the whole chassis out and you would still have the antenna board mounted to the back of it. So that's pretty cool. So we can't plug it in yet. We've got some serious cord issues here, people. This would be an electro boom moment if we plugged this in. Boy, y'all would really lose your crap. I've been getting tons of people so far on the channel telling me I'm doing it wrong. Y'all would y'all would really lose your crap if I plugged this thing in. You know what I think I'll do? Look at this. It's still got the, the cover on the plug. So I think what I'll do is we'll save this end piece if we can. That might be original. Kind of looks like it. So we'll put a new cord on it and save the end, hopefully. All right, so the two knobs appear to be identical. And they're both in great shape. I don't know what that white stuff is all over them. I don't know if that's wax or something, or if that's just uh, like something that they do over time where they're breaking down a little bit. It looks like it's just going to clean off. But I don't know why it would be all inside it. All right, and then here is the other little thing. It came right off. I was able to remove those by just pulling on them. And it doesn't look like anything is broken or anything. So, very cool. There's the two screws. I would say those are original. And then here is the case. I don't know if this is Bakelite or just plastic. Um, but I got to tell you, I can't find a chip on it anywhere. Now, this isn't going to... I'm not concerned with stuff being high dollar where it's worth a bunch of money or anything like that. I just like the look of it. And it's always fascinating to me when something has survived all this time and it's still in good shape. So this isn't necessarily something that's expensive or worth a lot of money, but it's cool. It looks good. Awesome. And we already saw the front of it. So I think all that stuff's in good shape. But again, this was probably a low end receiver. Can you even call it a receiver? I doubt this has been plugged in in a long time because of that cord. So the speaker has survived intact. Hopefully we can keep it that way. Here is the um, the geared tuning thing we were talking about. And then there's the volume knob. Let's see if we can figure out how that geared thing works. I know I'm grabbing under it and everything, but really I've had this for months and uh, I, don't, I honestly don't think this thing has been plugged in in at least 20 years. So I'm not too worried about getting shocked, but if I did get shocked, I'd just have to suffer through it. Ooh. 
Ooh, it's fancy fied. So there's the tuning condenser. Everything looks pretty cool. How is it doing the geared thing? That's what I don't get. Like, how are we turning this and it's turning that? Oh, it slips too. So it's just, it's got a, it's a clutch, you know, I'm turning it and it won't continue to go, which means that wouldn't continue to turn either. So you can just keep turning the knob and it'll slip. Let's see if it does it the other way too. Yeah, it'll keep turning. That is wild. Almost looks like a couple of them are bent, but I'm not going to mess with it. Yeah, the outside ones look bent, don't they? I think we leave that alone, though. Uh, yeah, so I don't know how they're making the clutch action happen, but I'm impressed <laughs> for such a cheap little radio. Let me turn it back around where we can get to it. All right, so speaker, two IF cans, and five tubes. The straight up all American five, right? And the tuning condenser. So let's look under the bottom. What do you think? Has it ever been worked on? I'm going to go with no, we're the first people to take it apart. And I base that on this cord being so frayed. I think this thing's been sitting somewhere a long time. Looking pretty. This is a shelf queen. We can probably tell by the uh, the uh, tubes, can't we? Remember, folks, just a reminder. This is amateur repair time. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I think it's all original. You know, the, the point of the amateur repair time thing is when I work on arcade games and pinball machines, I'm trying to prove the point to people that uh, if you... I wonder if that was hooked to something. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. It's, it's real stiff, so that's just... Like, that doesn't need to be held anywhere. That's just, you know... The whole point of uh, when I'm working on the pinball machines is I'm trying to inspire people to fix their own pinball machines and arcade games so we can save more of them, right? Um, and I've had people say in the past, well, you know what you're doing. I, it's, it's, I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell what to do, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't know what I'm doing with these. I mean, I've fixed probably 10 of them. But I am certainly no expert. Just ask the people in the comments. that. <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, so, you know, a lot of repairing something is just having the willingness to repair it. Even whenever people tell you you don't know what you're doing. What do you think? I think all original. All original. If I don't break the freaking antenna off of it. Okay, very cool. All right, yeah, I wanted to see if the if all the tubes are original. Probably not. It's a Sylvania. So we have a a Dumont. And then we have I would imagine they would be Sylvanias in here, wouldn't they? An RCA. Kenrad, none of these are original. Kenrad 35W4. So it's definitely been, you know, maintained over the years. I'm trying to do all this with one hand without tearing anything up, so I'm lifting it up by the IF thing. There's a Sylvania. Fifty C five. Seen those before. 
That's kind of a standard, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this one has the shield still on it. Well, I guess, you know, you need it. And I don't know if it's the kind with a socket or something. Shield has been removed. I know you've all been saying I should get a, a, a camera to strap to my forehead. Think how silly I would look if I had a camera strap. I'm not, come on people, I'm not gonna put a camera strap. Come on people. Another RCA. 12BA6. All right, I got it back in there. Okay, so here's my plan of attack. Now here's the part where some of you are just gonna have to stop watching because you're not gonna like it, all right? The way most people do these is they replace every electrolytic cap in it and then they turn it on and it works and then they go, oh, look at me, I fixed a radio. I don't really have much interest in doing it that way. So I'm not really going to do that. And that really upsets a lot of people because that's the right way to do it. Oh, they know it's the right way to do it because that's the way they do it. Yes, I'm going to replace all of the capacitors because there's no argument. Yes, all the capacitors need replaced. But what fun is it to just replace them all and then say, oh, look, it works. I have no interest in doing that. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to replace the cord I'm going to check all of the caps to make sure none of them are shorted so they don't explode when I plug the thing in. And then I'm going to plug it into a variac with a amp meter on it. And I'm going to slowly turn up the voltage, make sure nothing shorts. And then I'm going to see if the damn thing still works. Because to me, that's interesting. That's how I like doing it. Now, if you don't like doing it that way and you just can't stand seeing it done that way, then you're just going to have to go watch somebody else because that's how I'm going to do it. All right. And I don't care if that's the wrong way to do it. I don't care how much more than me, you know, that's all fine. I agree with you. You are, you know, so much more than me. Remember, this is amateur repair time. This is not professional repair time. I'm not a professional. I'm an amateur, right? So I all right, folks, I have removed the old cord. I was getting pretty rough. I want to plug that in. I put a new cord on. Cut the plug off. Now you're going to love this. Yeah, I did. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll, you'll be okay. <laughs> and I swapped the original one on. Folks, it's my radio, okay? If you don't... I'm not... This is not an instructional video, by the way. It's just... Just enjoy it for what it is, if you can. If you can't enjoy it, just okay, I understand. Um, so yeah, okay, so I've got the, I put the cord in exactly how it was. I didn't mod anything. Um, I am now going to check all of our um, caps and see if we've got any that are, that will test shorted before I try to give her a little juice with the Variac. Okay, I checked them on with the multimeter. None of them are shorted at the moment, but the, you know, as you're all well aware, if you're watching this video, they can short at any time. Uh, so I am going to take out the across the line cap, which is basically connected. This is kind of hokey here too. I believe it's all original though, but which is basically connected from one side, the hot, over to ultimately the ground. So this cap is across both sides. Um, it is it is switched, but still, if, it, if we're sitting here playing with the radio and one of the caps decides to short, I don't want it to be the one that's directly across the AC lines and burn down half of the, uh, the office here. All right, so I'm going to swap that one with the safety cap, and then, uh, then we'll be ready to Try to boot it, try to get her to come up and see if it'll do anything before we do the full cap kit. All right, folks, so I've got a Variac. I've got it plugged into an amp meter. I've got it plugged into the radio. Okay, now on the previous video that I used this thing, somebody told me it won't read right because it's sideways. It's not sideways. There is a, there are feet on the bottom of it, actually. 
there is a carrying strap here and here. Um, I, I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so we're gonna plug it up. We're at zero volts. Let's see if we blow any fuses or anything crazy. Nothing. That's good. Nothing is good. <laughs> now the amperage, whenever we get it up to full voltage, ought to be low because there's, there's a low wattage radio. Um, we're turned off. Now we're turned on, but there is no voltage. All right, so we're at zero. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. We can watch the amp meter a little bit, see if it if it changes at all. So we're watching the bottom gauge, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. I've got it on low, which is uh, one amp. There's a low, medium, and high set. So that tells you which one of your three uh, meters you would use. Okay, we're at 30 volts. Lifting up a little bit. We're up to about 60 volts. Nothing shorted and doing anything crazy yet. Really nothing's going on. Do we have any tube glow yet? Yep, we do. A little bit. Now, I don't think you can reform caps quickly. So, you know. The thought process is that maybe you can bring the caps back, but I don't think I can do it this quick. It probably wouldn't do anything. Am I hearing something? Yep. So we're at 60 volts. It's not drawing hardly any amperage, so nothing shorted. We replaced the across the line cap just to make sure it wouldn't, because that one would be, dang, you know, not necessarily super dangerous, but it would blow fuses and stuff in the in the wall. You know, you you would basically be shorting the two lines together. Let's see if anything will tune in yet. That's sixty volts. Hell yeah! Did you hear it? Is that? I think it's, it sounds like Hispanic Christian music to me. What a wonderful thing to play on this radio when it, we brought her back to life by just fixing the chord. There's a commercial. Homes with reverse mortgages. Homes with non-paying tenants. Even Yeah, Council has free diabetes awareness partners. Well, this thing's picking up all kinds of crap. We haven't even capped it. Concerns a new law, Governor. You know what I'm always looking for? We, we, we're trying to see if we can reach Nashville.
and housing assistance for up to seven years. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, it's pretty much working. It needed a new cord. So, I'm going to recap it now. That'll make all of you happy or halfway happy. Um, but, you know, the, the thing would probably work fine for quite a while just the way it is. There's not even any hum from the filter cap. And we're only at 60 volts, which isn't probably a great idea to run it like that. But, hey, we're taking it easy. All right. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to... Go ahead and swap some caps. It didn't look like there was even that many. Uh, I'll show you the schematic. We we'll all have more reasons to love North Carolina. Litter less, get more. For more on the seven outdoor NC Leave No Trace principles, visit OutdoorNC.com. Sponsored by the North Carolina Association. Of I have a thing where when you go down low, I don't have this pushed all the way on yet, but whenever you go down low, you start picking up all kinds of noise. That. So I don't know if that's like the... Um, the capacitor blades are touching or something. I think if they touch, they short out, but maybe it's dirty. I've aligned it. I think I've got the alignment right. But. <laughs> now, I know what everybody's thinking. Oh, you've got a switching power supply causing noise. No, I don't. I don't do switching power supplies. I don't have anything. I've got a couple lights here. If you turn them off, they have absolutely no effect. Yeah, you're gonna hear it crack, but listen. You can unplug the lights, doesn't change anything. And you know, everybody says, oh, cell phone chargers, blah, blah. I don't have any of that crap. Look, people, look, obviously I'm not big into uh, modern uh, uh, technology. <laughs> I can't figure it out. Oh, man. They're playing all the good stuff. What? They're playing Liberty Valance. So I, did, I got all the caps swapped. I, um, I tested the tubes. That's another thing. The, uh, I, this is the kite that's got the, uh, 12AT6, which I heard you can replace with the 12AV6. I've only got one 12AT6, and it doesn't test great on my tube tester. Um, it's questionable, right? <laughs> so, you know, on mine, it's a B and K. It should be, you know, like 60 to be good. Mine's like, it's like 50. And so I tried some 12AV6s, but I don't have very many 12AV6s that are great either. So I don't know. Maybe that's just as good as I can expect out of this one at my current uh, skill level. Um, I'm, I'm going to check resistors just to make sure there's not a resistor way out of spec. I've ordered some resistors too, so that's my last shot though. That doesn't do it. I didn't even know this channel existed though. It's at right about 800. All right, so this one that has a 12 AT6, uh, which you can replace with a 12 AV6. The 12 AT6, this one's definitely bad. It's working, but the voltage coming off of the anode 
is way too low. So I'm getting like 34 volts out of it and it's supposed to be 57 volts. So I swapped in a 12 AV6 and uh, the voltage is correct. So let me show you the schematic. You can see what I'm talking about. And here's my cap kit for those of you who are curious. All the resistors are still where they were. This is actually a resistor, believe it or not. I haven't moved anything. I replaced the, the paper cap with two axials um, and just used the wires that were on the paper cap. And of course there's our new line that we put in. So I think now that I've got the voltage correct coming off of the detector, is it the detector? Converter, detector, whatever. <laughs> um, the first IF, uh, uh, it needs to be aligned again. So maybe an alignment this time will take. I aligned it with this in there, but the voltage was wrong. So there's, that could be the whole thing. Also, all of the resistors are off. I've ordered some, I haven't got them in yet, but. All right, so I have swapped every tube. That didn't fix it. So basically from on the bottom half, I've got this going on, right? Bad static. Checked all the connections, tried to reroute stuff, made sure everything was how it was, tried to move stuff around, nothing changed it. Tried pushing on all of the resistors and the caps and seeing if anything affected it, nothing affected it. Um, there is a cap right here that is not a paper. It's like a, it's an old school ceramic or mica or something. I can't even tell what it is. It almost looks like a resistor, but it's because it's such a low value. So I didn't replace that one. Uh, some of the resistors have strayed. I ordered replacement resistors, but they sent me the wrong ones. Every time I ordered Meg, they, they sent me... Uh, K, <laughs> and, and you know, it's from a big company too that's into old school electronics. So I don't know. I guess I could blame myself, but I I relooked and I ordered the right stuff. So I don't know what happened there. Some of them I did have though, like I got the 2.2 megs. So I replaced it. This one's fine, but it's like 26 meg, you know. So it's it's out of spec, but not crazy. Um. All the caps were replaced, except for the ones inside the IF cans. Okay. Uh, voltages. The, the 1200 ohm resistor here has drifted up. It's about 1500 ohm. But to be honest, that, you know, all of my uh, voltages coming in from the wall are high because of just the way that the, uh, you know, we're higher than 117 volts or whatever this thing was designed on. Um, so like instead of 110, I've got 116. Everything's high coming in, but because that resistor has uh, drifted, um, it has actually kept our, uh, our voltage here at 93 volts or we're at 94.4. So if I were to lower that back down to 1200, it's going to jack that up. I don't know that that's good, right? Is that our, is that the plate voltage? I can't even remember if the cathode or the anode is the plate. I think the anode is. Um, so like I said, oh, so then I had to, I had to align it. So I've got a, you saw my, uh, signal generator earlier everything's cool you can you can adjust everything fine and i can i was able to get a pretty good tone but I, it was a big wide tone there wasn't like a an easy an obvious peak so i don't know if that's we got a problem here it may just be that instead of silver mica disease maybe these caps have drifted but if they're mica i don't know that they would drift so i, I don't know but that's where we're at. So there's my notes and there's the schematic. If you think you can figure it out, let me know. 
Um, this resistor, this capacitor here was the only one that looked even potentially like a problem, but whatever. It's like you get this wine. Now I took it in the other room just to make sure it wasn't the lights or anything. And if I turn the lights off or unplug the lights, you can hear the cook, right? But if I completely unplug them, that's like everything switched off from the wall. It has no effect on it. Same thing with the ones over there. Same thing with the light in the room. Um, and so you can get pretty decent reception, but it just, it has static over it. On the low stuff. So that's Nashville is trying to get, which is pretty far away. It's a little bit overcast tonight. I don't know if that makes it better or worse. So there's a few channels down there, but we need him. We need him back. We need those boards, boy. We need those boards. Yeah, because Hornstein right now, I know, uh... lost a tire right after taking off from San Francisco Thursday morning. Uh, this is like three five. We're in a quiet spot. We're in a building with twenty thousand people. Surgery, one of the famous houses. This game night fight night special. Here's some two ninety nine. Coming up next. O'Malley, if he wins tonight, what's next for the young star here on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app? Flexible credit plans, subscriptions, and thousands of free images available. So you can get it all without breaking the bank. And on top when of you get up to here, Big you're good. Also has a no limit rollover for credits you don't use. Unlimited so downloads low of ones there. for that images light. you've purchased. Exclusive buyout rights. One of a kind exclusive images you won't find anywhere. Free shipping on your first order. Call one eight hundred nine two seven twenty five hundred. That's one eight hundred. I think that's our music channel we found at eight hundred. Are you kidding me? Gas prices are up again. Somebody. Tell them Kevin sent you, and you'll also get free shipping on your first order. Call They'll tell you I'm the most independent person they ever met at Parker Jewish Institute. Uh, in the whole situation with LeBron James. But then the child is invited to join a traveling soccer team. You know, maybe try to sprinkle it. Take us through... The Black Museum, Scotland Yard's repository of death. And he would go to a an artifact, you know, maybe it was a, a knife what? or a handkerchief or a canvas bag huh? or whatever. And then he would start to tell you how this artifact was part of a notorious murder case. What? And then it would be dramatized. In this particular episode from 1952, it's called oh. the Blue oh. 22. Which is oh, it's a TV show. Oh man, I thought some crazy stuff was going on in Scotland. And of course it's great because it... When it's rainbow, you look pretty. Some of the colors are actually... Okay. 1070 it just said. I mean, I'm pretty close, right? So, so now we're coming up on 1110, 50,000 watt, five miles as the crow flies. Three huge towers. If they fell, they'd hit my house. And so you you watch how it just overpowers everything. From the beginning of film through the 1960s. And the genre of Western was being used to describe films as early as 1912. Stories in the American West have been popular across a number of genres, from books and comic books.
of people that were no longer found on but Navaj works quickly, helping you drink more clear. Check the gas pertussis. Speak to your health care provider to ensure you are up to date. Every commercial is take drugs. I think you said kindness contacts. I thought it was jazz. It was just oscillation. Uh, it works all right, but I, I think there's still something wrong with the alignment. I think I've got, I'm, I think I might replace this capacitor. Um, I don't know. That's, <laughs> I mean, I replaced almost everything in it, so there's not much more to replace. I guess since this is actually on the converter, you know, if you look at it, the only purpose of that resistor is for the converter. So if it's high, if it's out of spec, that could be the problem. Um, so, but like I said, I ordered it. They sent me the wrong part. So we'll try again some other time. So there you go, folks. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. You, A lot of you people that are not amateurs probably know exactly what the problem is, but you're not here right now. All right, <laughs> so leave your comments down below. What would you look at next? And uh, we'll see you on the next video. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is Amateur Repair Time. Hey, by the way, if you want to see one that I did, that I was able to fix, check this video out. I'll see you on the next one.